Hey everybody and welcome back to another video. My name is Sid and today I'll be teaching you guys how to speak programmer. And more specifically, I'll be giving you a quick little primer about discrete math. Now I won't be teaching you everything about discrete math because that's typically a sem at least a semester long class so that you can get the mastery of the basics of the field. Um, and you know, discrete math isn't it really a, a, just a field, but I'll talk about that a little bit later. What I will be doing is making sure you know what discrete math is pointing you in the direction of resources that you can use to self-study and gain an understanding of the various sub-branches of mathematics within discrete math, and, you know, making sure that you know what you're talking about when you talk to a programmer. If you get this video to 100 likes, then I'll make a series about discrete math and make tutorials on a bunch of different concepts that I feel are very applicable to computer science. Now, before we get started, check to make sure you're subscribed. Only a small percent of my viewers are subscribed. Subscribing helps me out a lot, so make sure you can. And, you know, it's free, and you can always unsubscribe later. Hit the subscribe button. So what is discrete math? Um, discrete math is the field of math that deals with the study of discrete objects. That's a very helpful definition, I know, but you know, when you Google discrete math, that's a definition you get, something about it dealing with discrete structures rather than continuous ones. Now let's talk a little bit more about what that is so you can actually understand the definition. Here's a better explanation. So first of all, discrete math doesn't really defer to just one type of math. There's a bunch of different branches of mathematics within discrete math. Things like logic, set theory, number theory, graph theory, Boolean logic and algebra, and a bunch of other cool things. You know, it, it doesn't refer to this one branch of mathematics like calculus does. Discrete math has a bunch of different things in it, like I mentioned, and all of these branches deal with objects that are distinct and have discrete values that are not continuous like the functions you would use in calculus. An example of a discrete object is a triangle. A triangle has three edges and three vertices. A circle is continuous, right? It has an infinite number of points. If you were to try to represent a circle in a computer um, and you know you had to represent infinite points, you couldn't do it because the code would have an infinite runtime because you have infinite points. So what you really do is you just pick a really large number of points and then you approximate what a circle looks like discreetly by using a discrete number of points. That way you can actually represent what a circle looks like in a computer program. I hope that made sense. Anyways, discrete math is the basis for a lot of computer science, and it's important to know if you want to pursue a computer science degree, less so if you want to just be developing things, but it is still very, very helpful to know. So what topics or subjects fit into discrete math? Um, there's a few that I think are like really important, and I'll mention them right now. You'll have logic and proofs, number theory, combinatorics and probability, graph theory, set theory, rec and recurrences and relations. Um, all of these are important to get a really good basis in discrete math as a whole, but the first things that you would probably learn would be logic and proofs, set theory, and relations. Um, and you'd also probably learn combinatorics and discrete probability at this point. After that, you would take graph theory and number theory and a bunch of other topics as separate courses. Now let's talk a little about what each of these means and some good resources for learning them. If you have any suggestions for resources that I don't mention in this video, um, that I might have missed out on, leave them in the comments and join the Discord server, link in the description down below and share them with the community. Logic is the study of reasoning, but in the discrete math sense, you'd be doing this formally with the language of logic, um, using different operators, learning new symbols, what they mean, and being able to write down logic on paper formally. Um, uh, the great way to do this is to get a textbook on logic or watch YouTube series or YouTube videos on it. And I'll mention that in just a little bit once we talk about everything else. Set theory is the study of sets, which you can basically think of as a collection of objects. Um, and these objects can be whatever you want. So, you know, and it's pretty analogous to a list in Python. Um, that's a very informal definition of them, but sets are a very fundamental discrete math structure, and it's super important to know them. In the process of studying these two fields, you will develop an understanding of proofs because regardless of the resource that you're learning them from, proofs are gonna be an integral part of uh, these two subjects, especially logic. Um, you're gonna have to prove certain statements to be true or false using different proof methods, such as induction, contradiction, um, just a straightforward normal uh, proof, and a bunch of different other techniques that you'll learn and you'll pick up in different courses on the internet. Relations and recurrences will also show up in any basic discrete math course that you take. All right, enough beating around the bush. Here's the YouTube series that I would recommend. Dr. Trevor Bassett, I think that's how you pronounce his name, sorry if I butchered it, has an amazing playlist of uh, math videos about discrete math that you can find on YouTube. I'll leave a link to it in the description down below. That, and they'll explain everything you really need to know about the field as a computer science student. And I'll leave a link to it in the description. To find practice problems and such, I would recommend checking MIT's open courseware and worksheets to solve. And I'm pretty sure Khan Academy has quite a few practice problems for the field as well. So let's talk about combinatorics and discrete probability, graph theory, and number theory. 
All of these subjects are typically taught in their own course for good reason. Uh, they're all very expansive. And the first course you take in these classes is usually just a bit of an intro to the field themselves because they're very, very large fields. Combinatorics and probability deals with counting, but in a clever way. Um, in addition to just good old fashioned probability, you're figuring out the chance of events occurring. Again, that's a very reduced and simmered down explanation of what the field is. If you want a great visual explanation of explanation of probability concepts, I would recommend checking out Seeing Theory by Brown. It's a great website with a lot of interactive animations and exercises uh, in addition to good explanations of certain concepts. I'll leave a link to it down in the description down below. Additionally, the YouTube playlist that I mentioned uh, above contains videos covering all the combinatorics and probability concepts you would need um, to know for basic discrete math. Moving on to talking about graph theory. Graph theory is the study of graphs. Uh, again, I'm a very helpful explainer, but no, these graphs aren't bar charts or line graphs or scatter plots. Graphs in the graph theory term, uh, in the graph theory world, refer to a collection of nodes and edges. And these nodes and edges are used to represent a lot of things. They can be used to represent road networks, airplane networks, um, social networks, and they can be used to uh, represent knowledge and the flow of knowledge in a bunch of different things. There's a lot of things that graphs are used for, um, and they're a very fundamental part of a lot of computer science. There's an entire part of, you know, learning data structure and algorithms, but you just spend a lot of time learning graph algorithms like depth first search, breadth first search, and dijkstra's. Once again, the YouTube playlist that I mentioned above contains a good intro into graph theory for the computer science student. And of course, there's a lot of resources available online to pursue graph theory further. And if you have any questions about those, leave them in the comments and I'll answer them. Number theory is the study of integers, simple as that. Uh, to get a grasp, uh, to get a great grasp of number theory, check out Michael Penn's YouTube series on it. Michael Penn has a bunch of awesome videos about math um, that aren't number theory. He has a bunch of stuff on abstract algebra and a bunch of cool challenge math problems and contest math problems. Um, but yeah, he also has a great series on number theory. So go check that out. I'll leave a link to it in the description down below. If you want to learn number theory, it's not something you would you know spend a ton of time on learning in a discrete math class. It's not like you were a math major, but it is super interesting and I recommend you learn it. Well, that's all I really have to say about getting started with discrete math. If you liked the video, uh, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And if you wanna go above and beyond to show your support for the channel, uh, hit my Patreon, link in the description down below. If you have any questions about, we about what I talked about, then leave a comment, DM me on Twitter, or Instagram, links in the description down below, or join my Discord server and leave a question there where me or somebody else in the Discord server could answer your question. Again, link in the description down below. Uh, anyways, as always, thanks for watching and have a great day. I'll see you in the next one.